Welcome back friends, this is Steve, KM9G, and we're gonna do something a little bit different today. We're gonna to do some SSTV download decode and uh, transmit. So if you don't know what SSTV is, it is slow scan television, and it is a way to get um, images out of your computer or out of your cell phone over the radio waves and into somebody else's computer or cell phone. A while back, I'll link it up above, um, Leah and I transferred some images back and forth between uh, Baofeng radios and cell phones. So it doesn't really need a whole lot of equipment. Um, today, I'm gonna do it on the computer. So that's why I'm sitting here at the computer desk in Studio A. Um, after I show you how to do it, we're gonna do a quick wrap up, quick, um, I downloaded a full day's worth of SSTV images on January 14th. And as you can imagine, January 14th was before the inauguration day. So we'll get some political messages. We'll get some friendly photographs. We'll get some uh, slightly close to the not safe for work border images. Um, but either way, uh, we're going to chat afterwards um, for as long as the images roll and as long as anybody wants to be here. So stick around for that. If you happen to see one of your images that you sent, leave me a comment down below as kind of a QSL card uh, with your call sign letting me know that I captured one of your images. That would be fantastic. Um, would love to hear from you. So let's roll the intro and get back into uh, learning mode. Stick around. <laughs> All right, let's make ourselves an SSTV image, a picture that we wanna send over the wire. I would recommend something that is fairly low resolution and fairly uncomplicated. You wanna think more cartoon than high quality photo, high megapixel photo, um, because it's just gonna take that much longer to send it and the image quality that they're going to receive on the other end isn't going to be different um, one way or another. Actually, it's probably going to be a little bit easier to understand if it's more of a cartoon style image than if it is a photograph style image, just because of the way the human eye works. So I'm going to hit create design. I'm going to choose custom size. And from my old DOS days, I'm going to pick 320 by 200, because why not? All right, so now I have a canvas set up over here to create an image on, and I have a slate of images and things to choose from. By the way, this is Canva, canva.com. Canva is fantastic. It makes uh, dummies like me able be able to create high quality um, images and thumbnails and things along those lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into text. I'm gonna add a heading and I'm gonna say uh, CQ KM 9G. And then I'm going to make that big and centered. See how easy that was? And then I'm gonna add another heading and I'm gonna put in my QTH as Wisconsin. And I'm going to take that and drag it around and you see that solid fuchsia line? If I move off, it's no longer there. That indicates that I am centered. And then the box is just a nice little frame around the outside of the image. It's a border, just to kind of give you a reference of what a border might look like. And then let's put an image in there. And I'm gonna go into elements and I'm gonna try and pick something clip art like. Something with a few colors and not a whole lot of detail on purpose. So let's say I want to choose this airplane to send. There you go. Now I've got an SSTV image to send. And you can get more complex or less complex. And as you see the roll of images that we have downloaded, you will see some really complex images. And you'll see uh, some of the photo artifacts that happen. And you'll see some really simple images. And you'll see... Um, how those turn out. These, this is the kind of image that I would want to send if I was going to send more often than not. Uh, I would send something like this. So canva.com, 320 by 200, cartoon style image. Put your CQ and your call sign, put your QTH on the bottom, put any other message that you want to communicate, transmit, broadcast, whatever. And uh, there you go. 
Canva has a built-in download tool, so you would say download, uh, PNGs work fine, download it to a folder that you know where it is going to land so that you can pick it up later. Let's get over to the other side of the house and let's get to receiving and sending images. This is a Linux machine. This one happens to be Ubuntu 18.04. 18.04 version of Ubuntu came out in 2018. So you do not need a new operating system in order to do this. You do not need a powerful machine. This is a MacBook Air. If you know about the MacBook product lineup, the Air is the ultra portable, super lightweight, um, and also not very heavy hitting uh, machine. So not a whole lot of hardware. This has eight gigs of RAM and it is an i5 fifth generation processor running at 2.7 gigahertz. And I have the screen resolution set to 1024 by 768 just so that you guys aren't squinting to see my screen as I'm doing this demo. This little tool that makes this graphic is called NeoFetch. It's uh, pretty easy to install. I like it. I use it a lot when I do stuff like this. Oh, what kind of machine are you running on? Let me run NeoFetch and copy and paste this in and now you know. Um, and it's pretty. And it runs on just about any Linux flavored uh, OS and the image that it has on the screen will change depending on what your OS image is. So if it's a Raspberry Pi, it'll actually show a Raspberry. If it's a Mac OS, it'll show an Apple logo. This happens to be a MacBook that's running Linux. I know, it's weird. I have I have dogs and cats sleeping together. It's, it's kind of crazy here. Um, so don't need a lot of hardware. Don't need the latest operating system. It's a, not a big power hungry application. Let's clear the screen and go about and getting this installed. All right, so we've got the screen cleared. The way you install software on Raspberry Pi or on uh, Ubuntu or Debian flavors of Linux is by using the apt tool. So sudo apt, and even if I'm searching, I still do sudo just because of muscle memory. Uh, sudo apt search. I wanna search for anything that is an SSTV program. Let's see what's out there. And what we have is ham radio data modes. I haven't used that one. We have QSS TV, which is the one I've used and I'll show you how I use it. And then YouTube DL. I have no idea how YouTube DL is coming up in those search results. I will look into that. If it's something interesting, you'll see a video on it. If you don't see a video on it, it wasn't interesting. Okay, let's uh, sudo apt install QSS TV, uh, cause that's the name of the program and I want to install it. As you can see, it's already been installed, but I'm gonna run it again, and it will tell me that it's already installed and is the newest version because it's already installed and it's the newest version. That's how that works. Okay, after it's installed, let's get out of the command prompt. You have a um, applications button down here in the lower right. This is Ubuntu, it's running Unity. If you were on Raspberry Pi, there would be the Raspberry menu in the top left. You would click that and it would be in one of the submenus there. I'm gonna click the applications menu. I just installed it, I installed QSS TV, so I'm just gonna type in QSS TV to search for it, and look, it popped up. So I'm running that, and I have my radio turned on and configured already, because I've already done this once or twice before, and it is already thinking that it is downloading an image, and this signal right here might just be the color black, because the top of this was black, and this is actually a pretty good, uh, transmission coming in so far. So we will take this time to describe what's going on in this interface right here. So you have obviously a waterfall over here of what has happened over time and you have a scope of what's going on right now. You can see that there's kind of uh, these three red lines that go up and down and you can see that they loosely correlate to some information that you see in the waterfall. You want to tune your VFO left and right to get that to line up. And then you can also see a signal strength meter over here. You wanna mess with your RF gain or your preamp or your antenna or your band conditions to improve that. Um, and then there's a bunch of other options over here in the middle. There's auto slant, auto save. Auto slant is when um, images are sent, they tend to move over every single um, cycle and the software developers have recognized that and now they automatically move them back where they belong to give you a nice square image like you're expecting to actually see. Um, I leave the rest of this stuff pretty much alone. I leave the mode to auto, but there is a lot of different modes. You kind of don't know what you're gonna get unless you're actually talking to somebody uh, who's sending you an image at the time that they're getting ready to send it. Um, so I just leave that set to auto and then I prefer a PNG file format. 
Um, but there are other file formats you can choose. And it is almost finished sending the image. And this is from K F seven C Y G. And it's a picture of a kid eating some watermelon. And right here at the end, you can see the, hey, I have stopped sending transmission. So SSTV signals will send you a, hey, I'm sending Scotty one. And at the end, they will say, hey, I'm done sending. And sometimes they will also identify in Morse code. So you can either put your call sign in the image like I do, or you can transmit Morse code at the end of the transmission with your call sign in it. And both of those are valid ways to identify yourself over SSTV. All right, so that's the receive side going on. Let's take a look at the transmit side. All right, let's start looking into configuration. You wanna configure your radio the same way you would configure it for WSJTX or for PSK31 or FL Digi or any other, you know, JSA call, any other digital mode that's out there. It's gonna be relatively similar. I have some videos linked above for how to configure a 706 and an 891. I'm currently running on an ICOM 7300. Um, Basically, you want to go into the radio's front panel configuration, go into the menu system, go into the touch screen, go into whatever it is, get to the settings for your COM port, your CAT control, and set those up as uh, you see fit for your environment. And I will get into what those will look like on this side. Um, but if you want to see like the physical settings on the radio, uh, look at those videos up above. So we're going to go into the options menu. We're going to choose configuration. You're going to get this first page here. Uh, which is going to be your station operator and location type information. So I put in my name and my call sign and my QTH and my grid square. Um, directories is going to be where this is actually all the default. This is going to be where it's going to look to pick up information and where it's going to look to save information. And you can change these as you see fit, or you can make a note that these things exist. Um, so I'm just going to make a note that they exist. If I'm going to look at my images. I'm going to look in the RX SSTV folder and that's where the images that have completed are going to be. Uh, GUI controls I have never messed with. Um, feel free to change those around as you see fit because it's not going to really uh, hurt anything. It's just going to change the way it looks to you on screen. Sound. This is where it gets interesting. Uh, different radios have different sound devices. Most of them are going to show up if they have a built-in sound card as some generic USB audio codec. Uh, you want to pick one for input and one for output. If you're running the Signal Link sound card, it's going to show up as Burr Brown audio device or Texas Instruments or something along those lines instead. Um, but there's not a lot of choices in here. I mean, we've got one, two, three, four, five choices to choose from. You may have more or less on your machine. Um, so you can just go through process of elimination and figure it out fairly quickly. It's either going to decode and show you a waterfall over here, or it's not going to decode and show you a waterfall. Output device is very similar. You're gonna to want to go through output device type stuff and um, you know similar process, process of elimination, figure out which card you want. These are the ones that work on my system. Um, next up is cat control. And this is what I was talking about earlier. If you are using a regular uh, serial connection to your radio, you're gonna to wanna to pick your um, port and you're gonna to wanna to pick your radio model out of the list. And then you're going to want to match up your radio settings and set your push to talk method. Um, so we're telling it push to talk control is by cat. And I'm actually using rig control, which is a Linux daemon. Um, but there are many ways to do it. This is just the one that I happen to be using. And then CW is how I want to identify over Morse code at the end of my transmission. 22 words a minute, DEKM9G, which is CW shorthand for from me and then i have it send out at 800 um, hertz signal tone frequency um, it's actually going to send an audio signal to your radio that is cw it's not going to activate your um, built-in keyer or anything like that and then all the rest of these settings up here i do not use there's some fantastic stuff if you want to get super advanced and run a web server that automatically receives every image and displays it on the web for everybody um, you can do that via the FTP setup here. I don't have that set up, so I don't have anything here set up. But uh, that's all the features that you need to go through here, and that will get you set up for receive, and you should start seeing some images come through. All right, let's get into transmitting. You want to go into the transmit tab up here at the top, 
and you want to click the open icon on the toolbar and you want to pick your image to send. I created this CQKM9G with my channel logo and my QTH of Wisconsin. And I am going to pick the mode to send. Pick any mode that you want for any reason that you have in mind. You can go look up, if you really want to go down the, the deep rabbit hole of SSTV, you can go SSTV PD290 into your favorite search engine and get all the details on what makes that the best mode ever. Um, I am mode agnostic. I'm going to pick, uh, let's see, I'm going to pick MR115. And next I want to set up to identify over CW on the way out. And stretch is, oh yeah, stretch the image to fit the available um, image size or crop the image to fit in or fit the image by shrinking it back down to fit into the space. So if your image mode that you're using only allows for a certain size, then that's what you want to pick the appropriate thing for. I set it up for stretch. Works fine for me. Over here in the waterfall, you can see that somebody's currently transmitting an image. Let's take a look at the receive side and see what that looks like. Yep, somebody's currently transmitting an image. So good amateur practice means check to make sure the frequency is not in use. You can clearly see that the frequency is in use by looking at your waterfall or looking at your receive side or looking at your radio or looking at your signal meter or any of those tools that us hams have available to us. And we will wait this one out. All right, and these little indicators here tell me that that is over with and I will start transmitting before somebody else does. My turn. And of course, as you're transmitting, your receive audio goes silent. And if you have a radio that has a waterfall on it, you will see pretty much this same thing in your radio's waterfall. And I'm watching my radio's waterfall because it's pretty. All right, and we are done and the transmitter is off. And that's all you have to do to send and receive SSTV images. All right, so if you want to send some SSTV signals, then these over here are some common SSTV frequencies, but there's a whole lot more than those three. They're linked in the description down below, and believe it or not, they actually change whether you're in Europe or if you're in the US. So definitely take a look at the description down below. Coming up next, this is where it gets to be really interesting. On January 14th, I tuned my radio to 14230, and set it to download everything that I could possibly get my hands on. So we've got about 35 minutes worth of SSTV images. If you're watching this on the premiere, um, stick around in the chat and let's have a laugh at what these images look like. Some of these are PG-13 or better, so if you're offended by politics, humor, or the female body, this probably isn't for you. Um, otherwise, let's all have a laugh in the chat. Also, uh, Friday, tomorrow, if you're watching this in the premiere, I'm doing a live stream happy hour, which you can find in the channel um, and linked below, where we're all going to hang out and try and send some SSTV images live while we're uh, talking ham radio. So be sure to tune in uh, Friday, February 5th for that. So I'll see you in the chat. Thanks for being awesome.